There are many stories that grace the island of Jamaica. Through its history, myths, and legends, a lasting legacy has been left in the minds of its people. Join us as we present the past in Great Jamaican Stories. Our motto and coat of arms reflect one of three of Jamaica's indigenous groups in our story today. The coat of arms feature two Tainos standing on the opposite side of the crest, and it is where our story will begin. Jamaica is Taino country. <laughs> Let me start with that, right? So Tainos are everywhere in Jamaica. Um, if you're speaking towards those who identify as Taino, currently mostly in saint elizabeth mandeville some in trelawney saint thomas and throughout the maroon communities interspersed and in saint mary as well um the tainos in jamaica are the people that picking up in the cab the people that serving your food in taste is there everywhere that ancestry and that lineage is there it's just that there has been a tradition of secrecy when it comes to speaking about that part of our heritage due to ridicule due to it being documented that we're extinct and I'm trying to give more strength to the individuals and to be that face so that they can step up I'll take the, the, the ridicule so that they can feel that pride in themselves and understand that there's a lot of a lot of things for us to pick up and to continue for many years we were told the original inhabitants of Jamaica were the Arawaks there are Arawakan languages. The group of people that are known as the Arawak are in Venezuela, or were in Venezuela. It's a very small group. From that Arawakan family, you have several branches. What you were taught in school as Carib is actually Kalinago. From the Kalinago branch, you have the Garifuna, which they call the Black Caribs. Um, you have the Lokono in Bahamas. You have the Yame here in Jamaica. You have the Boricua in Borinquen. You have the Kiskeyan, some refer to themselves as Kiskeyan or IT, which is Dominican Republic and Haiti, because at different points the whole island is one, so they didn't separate. And Kubanakan, the people from Cuba. So there are various groups, right? Just as the identity of Caribbeans today is a mixture of various groups, it's always been that way in the Caribbean. <laughs> A cacique is a chief, is a guide, a teacher, is the one responsible for caretaking of the individuals that are his followers, that are part of the tribe. Um, in the simplest terms, it would be translated as the head of the household. But for our people, for indigenous people, the Taino, the First Nations of the Caribbean, the cacique was the one that would be in charge of preserving a lot of the knowledge, a lot of the teachings that was the caretaker of the tribe, of the village, who ensured that there were equal portions for each individual from the harvest and was the one that would communicate with the ancestors through ceremony along with the behike or the medicine man. I was chosen based on the fact that I had done some work and dedicated time to my Taino ancestors. In 2016, I was part of an intertribal prayer run and I represented the Tainos of Jamaica, uh, running and praying from New York to Panama. And on that journey, uh, I was able to represent for the Tainos of the Caribbean overall and bring awareness that that retention and existence still was present in Jamaica. For indigenous cultures, not just Taino, birds soar the highest, so they're closest to the Creator. And our traditions teach that when we send prayers and we connect to their feathers, to their wings, that those prayers are being lifted up to Creator, that they'll reach to the Creator. Now, various birds have different medicines, right? An example I use is the totem of our tribe, which is the doctor bird. The Taino tradition and folklore and mindset of the doctor bird being representative of the ancestors and medicine. So doctor bird feathers is very strong medicine feathers. Has been retained in Jamaican folklore as well. I mean there's a song Doctor Bud, a Bud, Hard Bud for Dead. 
lick him down, jump right up, a hard bud for dead. And and that's coming from that Taina folklore. The Maka feather, like the centerpiece here, represents leadership and, and speaking because the Maka is a, is a parrot. So it, it gives that strength with your voice to ensure that what you're saying is what you intend to be shared and that energy and connection is present. So for the individual wearing a headdress, which we call a kachucha, it's reminding them of these medicines that are all around us. We refer to these, these, these energies as medicine so that we can utilize them in our daily lives. There are words that were taken into Spanish and from the Spanish into English language. There's a little confusion with some, but they still exist today. So with words, we know huracan is the word that hurricane comes from. Hamaka is the word that hammock comes from. Tobacco comes from tabaku, which was actually the pipe, not the plant. The plant was cohiba, which that term is still used in Cuba to this day. Outside of language, I can speak specifically about Jamaica. We know iguana is a Taino word. Ligani was named because it was the place of iguanas, right? Um, the river that we have here at Boone Hall is coming from, is, they call it the Wagwater River today, but it's coming from Anatobe and the village there, the Yukayeke, was called Wewata. So it was a, a changing over time of the traditional name of that village and that water still carries some semblance of that name and that energy. Um, there's hammock making, there's the making of roots because African cultures make bitters. Indigenous to the America in Kiskia, the Dominican Republic, and here we make roots, which the, the Maroon traditions have preserved. The practice of jerking food has been preserved. Um, maracas are, as I shared in the story, are sacred to Taino indigenous people of this land. Uh, canoe making still takes place now from Wayakan, which is the traditional word of the lignum vitae tree. So <laughs> there is a lot of, of, of retention, and we'd like to bring more attention to that and preserve those. So this is a maraca. Uh, that's the traditional name. We know it now as shaker. This is the conch shell trumpet. We call the wamo. That we use to call people to a space and we use it in prayer as well. This is kohiba. The traditional word for tobacco leaf. This would be my tabaku, which is a traditional word for pipe. I use the shell as is, not much where it needs to do for a filter. This is Taino pottery. Um, some would consider them as semi. Semi is a term that we use for uh, items or spirits of nature. So this would be connected to the energy of fire. This one is normally used to burn certain sweet smelling fragrances to cleanse the space and the air. This here is yucca flower, which we call cassava flower. This was one of the main staples of our ancestors and it's normally used in offerings. This is the Mayawakan. The um, log drum, Taino drum. Two tones. And then this is a the Taino word for it is for tutu or for tuto. This one has a dini totem on it. Uh, we made wooden flutes as well. there's awareness right there is more education for the youth there is connecting the the parts of the tribes so there are more activities um, probably monthly and quarterly so that there would be sharing sharing of the language resurgence sharing of the ceremonial practices because we're an agricultural group so a lot of our beliefs about the cosmology of the universe is tied into crops and cycles, when to fish, when to do this, when to do that. 
to be a, a very present voice as it relates to environmental activities like what we're experiencing now with the cockpit country to ensure that Jamaicans, as I said again, I can't repeat it enough, are aware of that heritage. Because yes, there are those that will do the DNA tests and have the bloodline. There are those that have that retention in practices. But calling yourself Jamaican is to understand what that means and to understand this land that we're on, the practices that were here, that took care of it for several thousands of years and to take up that mantle so that it's there for future generations. Our next group can be found in the pockets of the interior of the island, a strong and proud people who are confident in who they are and where they're coming from. Amaroons are people whose spirit could not be broken, living in the wilderness and was dangerous to encounter. The origin of the word maroon is formed from the Spanish word cimarron, meaning wild and unruly or un and untamed. There are five maroon towns still in existence today, two of which are in Portland, Nanny Town and Charlestown, a Kompong and Moore Town in the Cockpit Country, and Scotts Pass in St. Mary. We are in Charlestown on the east end of the island in the parish of Portland. Charlestown was formed after signing the peace treaty in 1739. Our four parents went there to settle, found out that all controls, so what they did, they destroyed that place and then moved down to the northern shoreline in 1754. Well, in Jamaica currently today, I am the only female colonel. How do I feel? Marvelous. But it helped me to be a motivator, right? Um, I have to stand up tall because, you know, women is looking forward and it's looking on me to say, well, you can do it and we will follow your footsteps. Even uh, being a part of the Maroon Women, Maroon Indigenous Women Circle that um, Gamma Gloria James seems is responsible for, um, it helped me to know that, of course, as a woman chief or colonel, and as a woman in, in, in itself, I do have a responsibility apart from the responsibility of the, the circle that I have now carrying. I have a responsibility to be the mother of the young people around, the children around, or even to be a friend to the hurt or, you know, carry out the work of my father, my ancestors. So there are a lot of things that a woman do, just like shopping um, for a month in the, in, in the house for grocery. It's like taking care of the little money you get. You have to manage it and make sure it do. So it's like that. It's like taking care of everything that needs to be taken care of. There are all, over 2,500 Maroons in Charlestown. So as a colonel, some of my duty is to ensure that education is brought or is, or is placed in under reach of our children. So no child should be at home without going to school. Another one is to ensure that a child is brought up in the right way. So I can see a child going out there and not doing the right thing, I can school them. It's also to depart um, our culture to ensure that our culture is spread widely among the community or people within the reach of our contacts, our voices. Our young people, they carried forward what they learn or what they live, which um, in our schools today enough has not been with, um, taught to our people and we are trying to get most of that happening. 
And so I must say, a lot of young people is right here. In fact, here in Charleston, our Maroon group is a young people's group. If you come to a tour of the museum that comes with drumming and dancing and learning about the history, it is all the young people that you will see who are doing that and will be telling you about it. Um, it's not dying out, one. It went down for a while, but it did not die because everybody had learned their thing and they keep it. So a culture cannot die. doesn't matter how, how long it takes to happen, it cannot die. It will just cool down for a while, but when you are ready, it will be right there. So we know that the Maroons created jerk. They invented jerk pork. So jerk, today as it is, is done by the Maroons, was done by it and still do. So they would have placed the jerk and they would have dig a hole in the ground, place the meat inside it, cover it with bushes and jerk would have been done. Still do jerk that old time Maroon, maroon way. When we were about to begin, the Abeng was blown. It was created by the Maroon, still used today. So back then they used to use it to say where the British vessels were, how many were there, and what they, the Maroon, were going to do. Today it is still used to welcome people, to say we're cleaning the town, we're cleaning the cemetery, a baby is born, someone has died, and much more. <laughs> We're at a revival. Well, revival originated in, in, in Jamaica. It came out uh, of a great Christian revival in 1860 and another one in 1861. It is um, a, a, a combination of, well, it, it is founded in Christian beliefs, but it has very strong elements of African retention. So it's a combination of, um, it's a kind of syncretism of um, what you'd call more traditional Christian beliefs. As you will have noticed, the, um, the use of the Bible, the Bible is central and the King James Version in particular. And a lot of the hymns that are sung in a revival service are sung outside of revival as well. So it establishes its very strong roots as a Christian-based religious practice. It is a, a central part of our cultural heritage. So it is important in the sense that this is something that evolved out of the people. And although it, it it, the spiritual home of revival is what town in Sedan. It is practiced all over the, 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 the country and also internationally. The revival churches in the US, um, in the UK, um, at some parts of Europe as well, and also in some parts of the Caribbean. So it has a universal spread, but it is, it is very local in origin. There are certainly some sections of the populace who think that it is A, backward, that it is B, um, not Christian, and that there's somehow some evil attached to this practice, that it is, that it is pagan in other words. Um, on, the, on the positive side, the, um, people see it as part of our cultural heritage. This is something that came out of us and, and manifests itself in the ways that you will see um, being practiced during the service. Nothing is there for them to fear. You see the bread on the table, you can break and you can eat. The drinks that is on the table, you can pull and you can drink. We don't worship demonic force, we worship the heaven above. We worship the man that is up above. The red is love. The red is love. The green is the lush mountain. 
the all nation, the, the, the three in one, the red, the gold, and the green, it's an all nation. So you have the 12 tribe of Israel, we are all nation. The candle is the light of the world. You cannot go into the dark. For instance, if you should light your candle and put it on a bushel, you know one would see where they would be going if that candle is high on the bushel. And the tree, the, um, the, the, the flowers, yeah. it's just stuff to greet our angel because you have angel on earth and you have angel in heaven. So we deal with heaven, heaven the angel. The important of arrival is to know that you know the true and the living God. And when you bend on your knee, you don't have to light a candle. You don't need a telephone. You don't have to have service. We connected already. So there is no internet. And we are we're ready. We are ready. Highly connected.